live signal when we're actually live and we're coming up on a minute late we're coming up on a minute okay we're coming up on a minute late but we're close we had to reschedule we had it scheduled for 3:30, and then we scheduled it for 3:45 because we knew we weren't going to make 3:30. that was way way optimistic we almost made 3:45. And we're going to talk about crazy talk. We're coming up on a minute. And it looks like we do not have the chipmunk voice, so that's a big plus. So we don't have to reboot. We don't have to restart this puppy. So um, Sergio's in, second one. Hugo was in a long time ago at 3.11. And so uh, that's how that all works. And Blue is in the house. Blue says hello. And uh, in a minute, we're going to get into the topic. We're going to talk about some crazy talk. Crazy talk, folks, out there. That's what's going on. That's what we're hearing out, out in the interwebs. Some crazy talk. So here's the deal. I was watching a little bit of Archie's live show. I think it was last night. I was cruising around. I was in the living room, and I was cruising around uh my app on my TV, my YouTube app, and Archie was there, and so I popped in, and he was just in the process of telling somebody to buy a whole bunch of steel sports Rolexes because it's like money in the bank, to tell his girlfriend, his girlfriend is telling him to slow down, this guy, you know, stop buying Rolexes, stop buying watches, period, sounds like a smart young lady, he says, if you've got like 10 watches, you probably don't need more, right, but anyway, uh, so Archie says, no, 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 it's better than going out and spending the money on other women and so on and so forth and it's okay but buy Rolexes buy steel Rolexes it's like money in the bank so here's the deal folks don't as Dave Ramsey would say don't don't get financial advice from broke people now I don't know if Archie's broke or not he claims he's broke a lot of times and he claims that he's got debt and so forth who knows who knows with Archie but here's the other thing. Archie's in the business, right? He needs props. He needs watches to talk about and so forth. And so him buying a watch and then later selling it maybe for a profit is not the same as the average Joe out there buying a bunch of watches and thinking that it's a good idea. So, yeah, I would not take my advice from YouTube gurus, uh, especially when they're advising you to invest in watches. We buy our watches and we wear them. We, we like to wear high-end watches. I like to have high-quality gear and equipment. Any kind of gear and equipment that I use on a daily basis, I like to have high-quality because I don't want it to fail me, including my watch. And so the, hence the uh, Grand Seiko Titanium Diver, the SBGA 231, which is epic. But um, it's not an investment. It's a watch to wear and use and enjoy. Money in the bank is money in the bank, not the same as Rolex in the box. <laughs> Blue. Blue coming out with some some sage advice. So here's the deal. So then I'm surfing around. I'm surfing around uh, Facebook, and I uh, see this thread. Somebody asks the question, what's the difference between whole life insurance and term insurance and then there's this big debate and then these these insurance guys are going in there and saying how great whole life is and why you should buy whole life because it's it's good for your whole life right one 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 benefit of it is you you have that insurance benefit regardless of how old you are well you pay through the freaking nose for that <laughs> but anyway as Dave Ramsey would say about that, it's a really bad idea to buy whole life insurance. You're much better off investing that money in a real investment. Don't invest in insurance products. And and while we're on the subject of, of uh, insurance product, products, about 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago now, I had a meeting with my insurance agent down in Florida about the insurance on my house down there. And he was going to the rates were doubling uh, because oh you know you know hurricanes and all this stuff and all these new requirements and blah 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 so that it was going to go from 1600 a year to 3600 a year this is 20 years ago now keep this in mind and uh, 3600 dollars a year 
And so I told him, I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll just hold off on that. I'll just pass on that. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And he, he says, well, you know, you, you have to have insurance. The, the, the mortgage company is going to require, requires that you have insurance. I said, well, yeah, that would be, that would be a true fact if I had, had a mortgage. <laughs> so anyway, I said, I'll take the insurance if you'll pay the premiums. I said, otherwise, I'll just pass on the insurance. So, so needless to say, I passed on the insurance. That was 20 years ago. And so I ran some math, and by the way, it's gone up since then. It's not 3,600 now. It's more like 5,600, okay? It's almost doubled again. But even if you just took the amount, the 3,600, times 20 years, e even without uh, uh, making money on that, w without compound investment returns and so forth, I'm ahead about a quarter of a million dollars now. OK, over if I had been buying the insurance from them. insurance, folks, insurance companies are in business to make freaking money. OK, it's not it, people act like, well, if I get insurance, you know, then then uh, I'm way ahead of the game. Well, no, <laughs> generally speaking, no <laughs> would be the answer to that. I wouldn't buy car insurance if it wasn't forced on me by the government. I'd be happy to put up like a half a million dollar bond or something or whatever and, and, and not have to buy any any uh, car insurance because that's a rip off too. You pay through the nose for that. So you end up paying, you know, you could buy another car, you know, in 10 or 20 years time, the amount of money that you pay on insurance, you, you could buy another car. But, oh, well. And don't get me started on health insurance. Everybody was like, oh, my gosh, we got you got to have health insurance and all this stuff. Right. Well, here's the deal. Every penny that you pay to an insurance company that goes to their profits and their overhead and all that, that doesn't go to any health care whatsoever. doesn't go to any health care whatsoever. So if they want to fix the problem with health care in these United States, the first thing they should do is get rid of the insurance companies, get rid of all of them, and get rid of the lawyers, by the way. The lawyers don't fix anybody's back or, or remove anybody's appendix. They're just fat in the system. The insurance companies and the lawyers, those two, they're, they're just hands in the system, hands in the till that we're getting no value out of. So, you, hey, the title was Crazy Talk. You're going to get some crazy talk. We're, we're getting some crazy talk here today. What, hey, share some crazy talk in the chat, folks. <laughs> Let me know. You got any crazy talk for us today? Let's solve the world's problem. Blue's in the house. Howdy from Myrtle Beach, rocking the Brightling. There we go. Uh, money in the... Hey, okay, we already read that. Okay. Watches are there to wear. I would, I would hope so. No watches are not investments. I buy mine regardless of value. I, I like it, and I know I'm going to wear it. I buy it regardless. It's 20 bucks or 2000 There you go. The watch lounge in the house. Buy him what he wants to wear. Rich is in the house. R. Wags is in the house. I wonder what R. Wags has to say about insurance. <laughs> He's a money guy. I wonder what he has to say about insurance. I don't know if you were tuned in when I was talking earlier, R. Wags. I, I was doing some math. It was about 20 years ago that I canceled my insurance on my house in Florida because they were raising the rates to 3600 bucks a year. This was 20 years ago. I told the man, I'll pass on that. I'm not, I just won't take it. And he says, well, you have to, you know, your mortgage company's going to require it. I said, well, if I had a mortgage, that, that's right. They would, but since I don't, I'm not going to buy it. So, so for 20 years now, I've not been paying insurance and guess what? I've had no damage on my home. Now I do have to say, I do have a umbrella liability policy that covers like if somebody slips and falls or, or something at the house. I do have that, and that covers other things and, and so forth. Um, but as far as homeowner's insurance, and that's relatively inexpensive, the, the, the liability insurance that I have. Um, but the, um, as far as uh, uh, homeowner's insurance, no, I don't uh, carry any of that. So if the house gets damaged in a hurricane, guess what? Craig pays to fix it. But guess what? It's been fine. Hurricanes aren't a problem. I'm near Sarasota. That's where the Indians used to go. I don't know if you all know this, but many, many, many years ago, many moons ago, 
when the Indians knew that hurricanes, a hurricane was coming, they would head to the Sarasota area because that area was always spared by the hurricanes. And so that's where they would head. And of course, that's where my house is. So my house is in a safe zone in Florida. Even when a hurricane is going like straight towards Sarasota, at the last minute, they, they veer off one way or the other <laughs> and they dodge it. It's pretty cool. So if you're going to buy a house in Florida, buy it in Sarasota. And plus, it's a gorgeous area. So that's how that all works. Um, somebody says truth. I wonder what truth we're talking about. Uh, Rich, you're not related to Carl Winslow, are you? Okay. Uh, HMO, among other things, killed healthcare in the USA. Well, here's the thing, and I, I published a uh, blog post on on the healthcare thing. And this is going back like probably 20 years too. That, that I had several elements to totally solve the problem. One, get rid of insurance companies. Two, get lawyers out of the equation. In other words, make doctors, nurses, other caregivers immune from lawsuits. Okay, so you get the lawyers out of the equation. Three. Doctors, nurses, and other caregivers do not pay any federal income taxes. Give them a pass on federal income taxes. Okay? And four, of course, because the lawyers are out of the whole equation, they don't have to carry any kind of malpractice insurance or anything like that. So basically, all those things, if you take those steps that I just outlined, the supply of health care would increase dramatically because more people would want to be nurses and doctors because they're not paying any federal income taxes, right? They're not going to get sued, right? So more people would want to be doctors, lawyers, not lawyers, <laughs> heaven forbid, doctors and nurses and other caregivers, right? People say, well, oh, you got to have lawyers because what if they make a mistake? We got to punish them. We got to punish the doctor if they make a mistake. No, that just lines the, the pockets of the lawyers and the insurance companies and everybody has our hand out and all that whole deal and that is not going to work. If you want to keep track of who the good doctors are and who the bad doctors are, you just do it like any other business. You have it where people can rate them. And if you're a bad doctor and you're doing lousy work, you're going to get really bad ratings and guess what? You're not going to get customers. And so it's going to be a very competitive, if, they, if we followed my plan, it would be very competitive. Everybody would want to be a doctor or nurse or whatever, you know, anybody that has the acumen to do it. And it's because they'll be motivated to do it, right? And, and they'll be motivated to do a really good job because there'll be a lot of competition and because they're going to get bad ratings if they do a lousy job. And of course, you can have them licensed. I don't have any problem with them, a state license or something to be a doctor, and that license could be revoked, you know, if they were doing bad things. So you, there are other ways to police the, the situation than to have a big multi-million dollar lawsuits. Now, if a doctor does do a mistake on somebody and screws them up or whatever, you could have a fund set aside where that person gets some compensation for their injury or whatever to take care of them or, or whatever actually needs to be done. But they don't win the lottery. They don't get $40 million. You know, their lawyers don't get rich, et cetera, et cetera. You have some sanity in the, in the situation. So if they took those steps that I just outlined, the health care in this country would be fantastic. It'd be like McDonald's. It'd be like a place on every corner where you could go and get affordable health care. And just like you can get affordable fast food, right? Not that I recommend anybody eat that stuff. But you, you hear what I'm saying. It would be plentiful and the costs would be low. That's how that would all work. But we're going the opposite direction. What we're doing is all the policies that, are, that they're doing, everything is, is geared towards health care being less available and the demand being higher. We're, we're going the opposite way. We're increasing demand for the service and we're just decreasing the supply. We need to do the opposite. We need to increase the supply and decrease the demand. That's how it works. Like I don't need any health care. I'm very healthy, so I don't I never go to the doctor. I stay away from them. You know, I'm I'm scared to death of those people, right? So I'll I'll probably never go to them. Uh 
And so people will be motivated to not go to take care of themselves, to eat right, exercise, all those kinds of things, uh, because they won't have carte blanche insurance. They'll have to be paying for it when they go, right? So they'll be motivated to, to make better choices, I think. But this is crazy talk. Crazy talk today here on the channel. Put some crazy talk in the, uh, in the chat. Here's crazy. Fed will lower interest rates, hyperinflation, then housing triples in price. Too much cash in, in the system coming. There you go. There's a reason why the insurance buildings are generally the biggest, tallest in the big cities. I agree. Get the amount you need and no more. Yeah, I mean, I buy very little insurance. Very, very little. I don't even have insurance on all my camera gear. I, I did for a while. For a couple of years, I had some insurance on, on my gear, but it got too expensive, too. And I'm like, hey, I don't want to have to pay for the gear with five years' worth of insurance. I mean, this is insane. So, so yeah, I just, I'm just careful. I keep an eye on my gear. I don't set it down and walk away. And, you know, I just take some precautions. So, personal responsibility, as Adam Meister says, by the way, you guys should follow Adam Meister. As Adam Meister says, personal responsibility is the new counterculture. <laughs> so, um, so that's how that works. Um, don't fall for no holiday insurance. Don't fall uh, ill abroad without holiday insurance. Well, like I say, it's not a good idea to be ill, period. Take good care of yourself, eat right, all that kind of good stuff. You probably will be fine. You'll be good to go. But people constantly put poison in their bodies, and they don't exercise, and they, you know, they do everything wrong, and then they whine and bitch when they're sick, when they have diabetes or whatever, you know, they have, they have heart condition and so forth. You know, they've been doing the wrong thing for 30 years, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, my gosh, take care of me. Oh, I don't know. Personal responsibility is a new counterculture. That's what Adam always says. I, I'm starting to believe that might be the case. I also went without homeowners for, homeowners for 15 years, but getting a little scared. I'm one hour north of Sarasota. Yeah, if, one hour north, that's a little bit, that's up near where you might get hit by a hurricane. But I think if you've got a nice solid house, uh, nice solid roof, I've got real thick tile roof on mine that's real heavy you know it's kind of hard for that to blow off um i think if you got a solid house you might be okay uh so yeah truth when you were discussing lawyers and insurance meddling with health care well here's the deal they're not giving anybody any health care they're just they just got their hands in the till right that's like if the government gets involved and they're administrating things and all. Can you imagine how inefficient they are? Can you imagine how much that's going to cost? All the bureaucracy and overhead and so on. There's already a ton of regulation. And by the way, you've got to get rid of all that. You've got to get rid of all the regulations. Let these doctors and nurses and all just operate like any other business. Like I say, they're going to be raided. People, word will get around. If you provide bad service, you're not going to get any customers. That's how this works. Get all that, get all the slop, all, all, all the excess costs and inefficiencies, take them out of the system. Now, all of a sudden, it's going to be very cost effective. When I was a little kid, people didn't have insurance. They didn't have health insurance. When I went to the doctor, when my mom took me to the doctor because I fell and had to get stitches, which happened many times, uh, we paid for it. She paid for it. You know, we did a... We went to the doctor's office, they stitched me up, and uh, she paid the bill, 50 bucks or whatever it was. That's how that worked. Uh, let's see here. Hey man, vacation in Sasta Keys as we speak, best place in USA to vacation on the beach. There you go, absolutely. I've been, been there many times. I've got a lot of photos and videos and all from Siesta Key Beach. Go there, on, for, go there tonight for the sunset. The sunset celebration, the, the, the drum circle, maybe some of the hoop dancers will be there. Uh, go there for the sunset uh, celebration at Siesta Key Beach. 
You will love it. I don't know if you've been to that or not, uh, Gary. Check it out. Every, they do it every Sunday night at sunset. I'm from the original Winslow Mayflower family of 1620, direct descendant of e Edward Winslow, first governor of the colony. There you go. That's right. That's who hangs out here, folks like that. Watch doctor in the house. Um, how, how about the EpiPen that is life saving that cost $400 because the big pharma companies. Well, again, there's not enough competition and they give a lot of these companies monopolies and, you know, they all do a lot of heavy lobbying and so forth and they've got the government in their pocket. There's just a lot of corruption, a lot of, uh, a lot of issues. First of all, I don't think people should take any pills and drugs and all that. I, I don't think you need any of that stuff if you take care of yourself. You start getting hooked up with them and start taking a bunch of pills, and they'll get you on the program all right. You'll you'll be taking pills the rest of your life. You'll you'll you know you'll have one of those things that says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you've got like 15 pills in each thing. Yeah, they'll get you on the program all right. You'll be paying for their kids to go to those Ivy League colleges. That's how that all works. I stay the heck away from them. Uh, Yep, our litigious society has killed health care and many things. You're spot on with your observations, Craig. Well, there we go. We got somebody speaking common sense. Watch doctor, watch doctor you are correct. Myland is a poorly run pharma company. Okay. <clears throat> watch doctor and house. Craig, I understand your views, but as a member of the medical community, there are other mitigating circumstances as well. Big drug, drug companies and their lobbyists. Uh, ruining. Yeah, we, uh, we have to deal with them, too. We got to get all the fat and heavy expense out of the system. But again, the the. I don't think the drugs are needed. I don't think you need all those drugs. I, I think that we've created a, a society of people that are drug dependent of all kinds of different kinds of drugs. And I think it's not a good thing. I don't even take aspirin, for gosh sakes. I don't, I, drugs? What the hell? Why the hell do I need a drug? Eat right, exercise, take care of yourself, folks. Get a lot of rest. That's what I say. Um, let's see. Indeed, watch Dr. Spot on it crosses into the political realm and campaign finance reform. It's big, big, big problem for the USA. But here's, let's keep things in perspective. You know, if you take care of yourself and you are wise with your money and invest and do smart things as far as your health and fitness and all that sort of thing you're going to be fine none of these people are going to have any effect on you they don't really have any effect on my life you know they i let them mess around over in their world and i i'm over here in my world they're two different worlds and uh, i just don't get tangled up with them and that's how that works uh my house north of you is made of sticks it's a real hurricane if a real hurricane comes my second floor is history um interesting that you've got two floors my mine's all on one floor a lot of homes in florida are all on one floor interesting you might want to get a uh you might want to sell that place rich and get one that's stucco that's you know heavier duty construction you know blocks with the steel rods in them and all that all the you know anything built in the last 10 or 15 years is going to be pretty pretty robust um, you might want to think about the, if you're going to go the no insurance route you might want to think about upgrading to something that's a little heavier duty that can handle the storm otherwise you probably should buy insurance uh, let's see. Big Pharma is killing us all. The numbers prove it. There you go. <clears throat> um, I would say we need to look at our neighbors up to North Canada. Uh, don't say we should go total socialist medicine. There are a lot of unnecessary drugs, but some people are born with diabetes. Yeah, but you can, I, I think you can cure diabetes with exercise and eating properly and so forth. I, th I think you can turn that around. I really do. I, I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't buy into that. And as far as Canada, I had a bunch of friends that wintered down in Florida that would have like knee replacement surgeries and things like that done while they were down in Florida, and they would pay for it because the care was so lousy up in Canada and or they had to wait so long or whatever. 
they would literally pay out of pocket to have things done down in Sarasota while they were down for the winter as opposed to doing it up there. So Canada, their health care pretty much sucks. <laughs> so that's how that works. Um, and allergies, etc., requiring meds like insulin. Yeah, see, that most of those things are caused by poor um, habits, by poor eating habits, uh, poor exercise habits. A lot of those things are can be traced back to that. So, yeah, personal responsibility is the new counterculture. Uh, I agree. Opiates and some other meds are being overprescribed and not used right. I, I think it's a lot of meds, a lot more meds than just that. Yeah, I, I think I just would take a pass on all of that. Just kind of slide right on by all that stuff. Uh, I came on a little late. Was there any Rolex talk? <laughs> Rolex. <laughs> Here we go. There's that puppy we were talking about the other day. That beauty with the grape dial. What's this Rolex here? Yeah, same thing. What's this here? Oh, there's a Yacht Master 40. Oh, by the way, I want to show you guys. I put some uh I put some Yacht Masters in my favorites on Chrono 24. All gold ones. Let's let's talk about those for a second. Let's see if I can pull up their website here. Da, 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 Let's see if I can log in. That's going to be the biggest challenge here. Log in. Okay, I'm logged in, folks. I am logged in. Now let's look at my. Let's look at look. Here's one puppy that's on my notepad. They call it the notepad. Uh, so, you know, this is a possibility for an all-arounder, and we're going to talk about the clasp. We're going to talk about the, um, the stamped clasp, the older style clasp on these uh, five-digit ones. We're going to talk about that. But uh, here's the deal. Uh, let me see if I can pull up my, um, my whole list here. Uh, notepad. Okay, here we go. Here we got my notepad. Okay, and now most of these, I believe, are the five-digit units. 40 mils, all of them. Now, that white dial looks pretty legible. I'm not sure. I mean, the markers look real legible. The hands don't look... I guess they're legible against the white. I'd have to see one in person, really. There's the dark blue dial. That's always very interesting, I think. Okay, so 16450. Right? You get a you get a watch that's 11.7 mils thick. That's all 18 karat gold. That could be an all-arounder, folks. That could be a 24/7 365 all-arounder. And here's the thing, people, well, it's got the old style clasp and so forth. Well, here's the thing about those clasps. They are super comfortable. They're nice and trim on the wrist. They're more trim than a glide lock by far. They're not as long on the wrist. And, and they're easily adjustable. They've got the micro adjustments, and you can even adjust the tension when you close them by just slightly bending the swing arm a little bit, the one swing arm. But with the clasp, with the, the clasp that locks over, the flip lock, they're very secure. I mean, I wore those for years. I think it might be a better clasp than the newer style clasp in a lot of ways. I, I, I think you're getting a lot of watch for the money there. Let me know what you think. This is crazy talk today. Crazy talk. We're bringing some stuff right out of left field here, folks. Right out of left field, some crazy talk. I came on a little late. Was there any Rolex stuck there? I just read that. Okay, I've been here pre-Andrew, so I'm really in trouble. Yes, you're right. I need a new place. Um, in Canada, it's a disaster. You're spot on about it, Craig. Well, here's the thing. I, I Again, I 
this is not this this is from experience i had a lot of canadian friends that i played tennis with and stuff and that i knew fairly well and 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 some of them were having fairly expensive procedures done down there in florida because they had better results uh, they they paid paid for it right out of their pocket you cannot cure type 1 diabetes with diet and exercise no i've i've known people that have reversed type 1 diabetes and that have gotten off of insulin and have ha needed nothing and have been fine uh, they've straight up reversed the the effects of it so that's I've known people that have done that and type 2 of course yeah but even type 1 I've known people that have done that uh, please Craig this is not your own not like I say this is first hand knowledge I've known people that have actually done this um, my doctor prescribed me Rolex, Rolex. Um, now maybe they have, maybe they did not cure diabetes, but I'm saying they got to the point where they didn't need to shoot insulin. They didn't need to use any drugs. I'll put it that way. Um, they were somehow managing it without having to do drugs. So there's how that worked. And I'm not saying everybody can do it, but I'm saying I've known people that have actually done it. I'm wearing a, um, okay, something just got deleted there. Um, uh, <clears throat> stay away from the Yacht Master with platinum dial. They had problems and mine became miscolored in certain areas. Rolex replaced the dial, but I then sold it. Interesting. Well, that's the first time I've heard about that problem. I still think it's a, a, it's a stunning watch. I think I'd take a chance on it. I'm surprised you had problems with yours. I really am. Platinum is usually pretty robust stuff, so that's kind of bizarre. Um, my brother Jeff died from type 1 diabetes. There is no known cure, including diet and, and exercise. Well, that's a shame that he passed. Um, so there you go. Got some uh, first-hand information here. So I guess the people I've known that have gotten off of insulin and so forth were just lucky, lucky people. Luck works, too. My mom was on a three-year wait for a frozen shoulder. She finally flew to Texas and got surgery within a week that she happily paid for. Well, there you go. Some first-hand stuff. I told you we were going to have crazy talk today. It's crazy talk. Canadians coming down and getting cured. People somehow, some way, getting off of insulin, type 1 diabetic, getting off of insulin. How did they do it? How did they do it? Let me see if I can do a Google search on this and see if they say how they did it. Type 1 diabetes. Off insulin. Let's see how they did it. The body does not produce insulin. The body breaks down the carbohydrates you eat into blood glucose. Um, uh, let's see here. There is no cure for diabetes. Neither type 1, juvenile, on, juvenile onset or insulin requiring diabetes, or type 2, adult onset diabetes, ever goes away. The patient's insulin needs are minimal and some patients may actually find they can maintain normal or near normal blood glucose taking little or no insulin. Okay, there it is. You want me to read that again? There's no cure for diabetes, neither type 1, juvenile onset or insulin requiring diabetes, or type 2, adult onset diabetes, ever goes away. The patient's insulin needs are minimal, and some patients may actually find they can maintain normal or near normal blood glucose, taking little or no insulin. So see, what I was talking about is drugs, folks. I was talking about not having to take drugs. And in other words, shooting up insulin or whatever, right? I, wouldn't, I didn't come right out and say that they cured it. So, but I think some can get off of drugs if they eat right and exercise and do everything else they can.
positive thinking too, the power of positive thinking is, is robust. Let's see here. Um, you need insulin for type 1 diabetes. Your pancreas can't produce insulin. You can decrease, decrease dose of insulin based on that. As a physician, it's the truth. So are you saying that nobody with type 1 di diabetes can get completely off of drugs? Is that what you're saying? Because that's not what I just read on this posting here. Of course, you don't read, we can't trust everything we read on the internet anyway. But like I say, I've had people that I personally have known that were type 1 that were able to wean themselves to where they don't, didn't... Um, didn't inject anything. Now, can you take pills? I know they, they got off the injections. And I don't think you can do it any other way, can you? Can you would they t p take pills for it? Anyway, clarify that in the chat. Clarify that in the chat. Um, let's see. Yeah, I left a restaurant and my dial immediately discolored and I know how to keep a crown right it was a major well-known product issue Rolex kept secret so something happened to the dial we're not talking about the platinum bezel itself please clarify that now how do you feel about the 2019 GS SBGA 403 dial uh, okay let's let's look that up SBGA 403. Da, 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 da. Here's a blog to watch has something about it. Oh, that's a video. Hey, have you oh, seen shoot. these new you rings? Guys are gonna hear that. Let me just stop yeah. that. If he didn't have a commercial before. By the way, I give you guys at least 24 hours. I, I, I do not monetize these videos for at least 24 hours so that my good subscribers can watch these videos without any commercials they just got to do it within the first 24 hours so depending on your time zone or whatever most people should be able to do it within the first 24 hours and and avoid any commercial interruptions yes I would say it qualifies as crazy I the dial to me is okay I'm not a big fan of that case design I mean, some people love it and all, but it almost looks almost like an integrated bracelet type design, almost. I mean, it's it's just kind of funky. I I don't, it's just, for me, it'd be a no-fly zone. Yeah. Um, just bought a Pepsi GMT for retail, been offered 17K sell, was on the list for years, kind of like it, but yes, yes, if you can get 17K clear, with no selling expenses and the guy is willing to wire the money to your bank account and you can confirm with your bank that it is in there safe and sound and that it cannot be reversed you've actually got the money or if the guy gives you cash real hundred dollar bills that are not fake uh, I would take the 17k and run take it and run it's a beautiful watch it's a great all-arounder. It's a great 24-7, 365 watch. But for 17K, um, yeah, I would take the 17K. But that's just me. Um, you could take the difference. You could take your profit, and you could buy one of these, and it's just your profit. You've, you're still ahead. You basically have a free watch that is, by the way, awesome. <laughs> It's 231 is freaking awesome. And just to put it in perspective a little bit, right? Because I'm sure you paid less than 10 for the Pepsi. Aren't they less than 10 list price? Or right around 10? Something like that? So, you know, you're looking at a 7, 7K profit. You can buy these for around 5 in mint condition. You should be able to buy one for 5 in mint condition. Or, or lightly worn condition, you know, for 5 uh, they are getting a little harder to find, though, in that price range. They, they were readily available in that price range, but they are getting a little tighter. But I think you can still do it. 
You can reduce the dose of insulin, but you need daily insulin to maintain a basal insulin rate of type 1 diabetes. Type 2 you can control with diet and exercise and oral meds. Your friends would be likely two diabetics that they think are type 1 because they were uh, bad initially. Okay. Can somebody go from type 1 to type 2? Can somebody be born type 1 and then somehow mysteriously go to type 2? Uh, let's see. The bezel was perfect. Okay. The dial looked like it had water damage. Okay, so that's some other issue. That's not the platinum screwing up. Yeah, well, that sounds like a real issue. Again, don't, but a yacht master with platinum, with platinum dial out of warranty. Oh, did they make them with a platinum dial? I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So are, are you saying there was a yacht master that was a platinum bezel and a platinum dial? That's interesting. I didn't know that animal existed. Please clarify. Hello, Craig. Which Grand Seiko are you thinking will be your next timepiece, Gilbert? <sighs> Boy, they're not really making the watch that I want right now. Um, my needs are, are different than a lot of people. Number one, I want a watch that is easily legible. And the, the hands and the dial on this watch make it exceptionally legible. I mean, some people say they don't like the design of these hands, but the fact that the minute hand has that big rectangular pointer on the end, and I, I mean big, everything's big on this. All the loom on it is all nice, big, beefy loom. It makes it so easy to read. And then you combine with that the comfort on wrist of this titanium and the shape of the case, the way it drapes around and the way it's rounded and smooth and very nicely finished so that no matter where you move your wrist or how this flops around on your wrist, everything that's touching your skin is nice and soft and rounded, including the bracelet. The, and then add to that the fact that I've got the four micro adjustments and I've got the quick extension where I can just take this like this and I just extended that, see? And I can, it's a one-ray ratchet. I can click it in one, one, one at a time. I just did two, but now I've got like, I've got it out like one click right now. I mean, that is extremely, extremely nice and, and convenient to have. So for my use case, this is pretty amazing as far as a sport watch. Now, as far as a dress watch, <clears throat> I do like the 005. It's a little crooked there. I should straighten it up. But anyway, I do like the 005. It's 20 mils thick. It's a 39 mil watch. It's got a nice trim bracelet. But those hands are not as thick. I would much rather those be the squared off hands of like an Oyster Perpetual. Uh, that you would have a little bit more of a little bit more to 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 read uh I, let me see if i have another picture of the well i don't have another picture of the oyster perpetual but th these these pointed hands that get so narrow at the end for most people they look great but when you have older eyes like me and i'm all i'm in denial i don't always wear my reading glasses and so you know a lot of the time that watch is not as easy for me to read as this one. And so they, I would need the hands to be a little thicker, a little more squared off on a dress type watch, right? So they're not making the, the, the perfect dress watch for me right now. They, they don't make it. They all have those pointed hands. Right? And some of them don't even have the loom. At least this one has the loom, right? So that's a plus. But some of them don't even have the loom. So, so they need to come out with a different watch for yours truly. And I think other people would like it too. I think something with more of a dial, sort of like the Rolex Explorer, with the hands like a Rolex Explorer has, that type of thing, where it's a, a dressy watch, 
but it's got a more legible dial. They should make that watch, but I, I'm sure they will not because they don't listen to this channel. They don't care what I say. Um, and so that's how that all works, too. Uh, let's see. Uh, again, don't, but a yacht master with uh, yacht master with platinum dial out of warranty. Okay, I already read that. I'm sorry about that, folks. I'm trying to keep straight here, but this thing keeps jumping. Hello, Craig. Um, okay. Um, I special ordered the new GS Manual Wine SBG003. Just got the news that I probably won't get hit or, or won't get it you mean heavily oversubscribed I can't believe it um, did you talk to Steve at Little Treasury see if there's anything he can do for you I'd talk to him at least uh, yes the dial was platinum interesting the platinum metal or just platinum color that's interesting I wonder if it's just platinum color. Because rec actual platinum should just be very stable, just like gold. I mean, it should just sit there for a thousand years. I mean, it, it shouldn't have any problems. Interesting. <clears throat> it was a powder coat. Okay. Yes, I have your watch, and it is spectacular. No, no complaints. I just wish it was a little smaller, Rich. What size, um, Rich, what size wrist do you have? Um, I believe there is a similar watch to this that has the 9F movement, the quartz movement, that's thinner than this, that is smaller than this. Um, m maybe you can check and see the dimensions on that. I don't know if it comes in titanium, though. That, that would be the issue there. So, I agree, GS hands are too thin. I'll take Mercedes hands any day. Yes. Yeah, we should start, we should start letting the Grand Seiko people know that they're so all in on these, what do you call them, the sword hands, the pointy hands? Uh, what do you call those? But anyway, they're so all in on those hands. They just literally put it on every freaking watch they make. You know, let's six and three quarter rich. Um, yeah, you're you're right at that size where I if your wrist was any smaller, I definitely wouldn't recommend this watch. You're you're right at the limit, I think. Um, for this watch. I'll tell you, if your eyes are better than mine. That 005 might be a better solution for you than the 231. Uh, it's a 39 mil and it's only 12 mils thick. Uh, depending on your eyesight um, and what you think about that style of hands, it's a gorgeous watch. And when I've got my reading glasses on, it looks beautiful. I mean, but when I take my reading glasses off and I just glance at it quickly, I can like it it's not as easy for me to read the time whereas with this diver's watch bam I look at it it's just instant I mean it's just like a piece of cake it, it's so easy to read so um, uh, hey Craig I have several vintage timepieces that may seem to have squared off hands probably because they're smaller diameter timepieces and the squared hands are easier reading than Dolphin hands. Okay, so they call them dolphin hands. Yeah, for me, I would just put the damn dolphin hands on some of the watches. I wouldn't put it on all of them. They've just gone way overboard. I mean, even this watch here, the the that hand is a little bit squared off, that minute hand. A little bit squared off, right? Not quite totally to a point. And the hour hand is is definitely squared off with a bigger hunk of loom, right? I think that's the direction they should be going. Uh, not all of them the same. All of them with the dolphin hands. I mean, yeah, I would go. But I just don't need GMT, Rich saying. Yeah, but I'll tell you, 
that you don't it doesn't distract you having that extra hand I mean it can just go along for the ride right I mean it, I don't really need it either if I start traveling more I might but it doesn't really bother me having it there and when I wore GMT Masters for years didn't necessarily really need that but it didn't bother me that it had that extra hand you you tune it out you get to the point where you're just looking at the time you don't even notice it and I did buy a GS from Steve with day and date and rice bead bracelet it's 39 mil with screw down crown oh yeah that's a beauty but I'm in Florida boy and need a sports watch not a dress watch yeah, yeah but that that one that you have with a screw down crown I mean that can take a lot of a beating I mean that I don't know wh what sports what use cases it would not be suitable for um, yeah I, I, I think that's an awesome watch if it's the one I'm thinking about uh, it was the limited edition one I believe Rich right that you got that that's an awesome freaking watch so but again it has the the same hands the same situation and probably no loom on them so I can hear you that one is kind of a cross between a dress and a sport, right? It, it has loom, and it has the darker dial, so you have a little more contrast. And, of course, it has that 24-hour bezel on it. So it's a little bit sportier. Uh, so that would be something to think about. Uh, it just looks too dressy. I need a bezel, <laughs> okay? I'll tell you though, it's a that's a gorgeous freaking watch. I mean, I looked at that too, and it's n nice and thin. Um, how does it how does it work out on wrist for you? Do you do you really miss not having the um, the uh, micro adjustments? Does the bracelet tighten up on you on certain days, and 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 you kind of wish you had the micro adjustments? Um, and we're going to wrap this up fairly soon because I have not eaten lunch and I'm getting hungry I did eat some peanuts while I went on my my hike earlier and I load up my pocket with peanuts peanuts in the shell and I shell them as I walk and snack on them Virginia peanuts don't buy peanuts out of Mexico I think it has some real problems with the ground with like bad things in the ground and bad potential issues uh, but mine come out of Virginia and so far I haven't had any problem I eat them pretty often um, but uh, I haven't had any real lunch today uh, let's see here oh boy excuse me Explorer 2 Polar 42 mil my one and only we're at 24 7 365 plus 11 seconds last month I checked perfectly sized easiest Rolex to read there you go yeah that's a fantastic all-arounder I think it's I think it's around 12 mils thick something like that um, let us know in the chat how thick that puppy is but yeah I think that's a a good move for an all-arounder uh, oh yeah it's a perfect fit but I have to keep it loose as no micro adjustment but see the thing is it's nice and trim and lightweight and so you, it probably is not that much of a bother to have it a little bit loose that probably works out for you hi Craig all happy Sunday David popping in and we're getting ready to wrap the show David's coming in just to to close up and turn the lights out and so forth so he's he's popping in the house uh, that's the one error on the watch but it wears nice due to the size and thickness yeah, that's and also that bracelet is very flexible, very comfortable. So that's probably a big uh plus. Yeah, I I I think you're um a little more sensitive to the fact that it's a little too dressy than most people would be. I think most people you could be wearing that with with jeans and a t-shirt or whatever a swimsuit or whatever you could be wearing that watch and they would just think you're wearing a nice elegant attractive watch I, I don't think anybody is going to be judgmental in a negative way about that I think it's a gorgeous all-arounder and I, I think that um, 
if you're not happy with the 231, if you think it's too big for you and so on and so forth, I would sell it. And I would just wear the um, the stunner, the 9F stunner. I, I would have no, because it's got a screw down crown, it's going to be able to handle anything you can throw at it. And, that, and the 9F is an extremely robust movement. So I think that that would be a good a good day 24-7, 365 piece. I could wear this one 24-7, 365. I would loosen it a little bit. I'd have Steve put a half link in uh, so that I could wear it year-round because um, right now it's sized to be worn in the wintertime because that's when I wear long sleeves and I need the thinner watch. So it's sized. I could put it on right now. It would just be a little bit snug. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll put it on. Show you that one while I get it. Go over and get it. So here it is in, in hand. And I'll tell you what, the, these just, when you hold these, they just feel so solid. And they're so elegant looking. See the shape of that case? And, and I mean, they're just, and it's just such a gorgeous watch to look at. I mean, I've been critical of those hands, right? Because I don't want to wear my reading glasses, but they are gorgeous. And the dial is gorgeous. I mean, you just have to take this thing in sometimes and just look at it. So let me put it on wrist. And yes, I'm setting it down. I'm setting the watch down on top of the bracelet, but I'm doing it nice and gently. Jeez, people. All right, so here we go. We're going to put this on. And you can see it's it's okay. I'm here in the air conditioning. I could wear it right now with no problem. Very trim on wrist. See how trim it is on the bottom? See how small the clasp is? See, I like that. See, there there are advantages to not having the micro adjustments and all too, right? It makes the bracelet more trim. So it's all, everything's a trade-off with watches, folks. Everything's a trade-off. But you can see how elegant that is on wrist. That could easily be a 24-7, 365-er. If I take my glasses off, see, I can still read it. It's about 17 minutes to 5. It's just a little bit fuzzy, and it's just it's just not as clear as if I was reading the um, the diver's watch. But I could definitely read it. It's just I'm spoiled by the 231, right? Now, you guys, most of you guys are younger and have better eyes than me, so most of you guys would be a total non-issue. But again, everybody's mileage varies. But yeah, this is more sized for me to wear it in the wintertime. So there you go. The 005 on wrist. A fantastic, fantastic piece. So, um, uh, let's see. Craig, uh, this is from Mike. Uh, Craig, I have the same wrist size as you. What's the max lug to lug you would go with? <clears throat> a lot of it depends on the lug design also. I, I highly recommend that you try the watch on. I don't know what the lug to lug is on this, but you can check the specs on the 231 and see what it is. But this would be about the max for me. And it works because of the shape of the lugs and the shape of the way the bracelet hangs around. So all of those things play into it. And the, and the shape of the sides also. See, when you get a bigger watch, everything has to be done right. Otherwise, it's going to be irritating as all get out. Like if I was wearing a, a Cameron right now, a Deep Sea or something, or even a... Even a regular maxi case sub, I mean not maxi case, super case sub is going to be a lot less comfortable than this watch because of the, the, the design, the way they're so squared off and especially this side, the way it's so squared off and everything. It would be 
less comfortable than this, even though it's a considerably smaller watch. So you got to take into consideration the, every aspect of the case, the bracelet, the weight. This is that titanium, special alloy of titanium that Grand Seiko uses. It's extremely rugged and lightweight and more comfortable on wrist because of the thermal properties. So, and the hyperallergenic, you know, it, it, there's no nickel in here to, to, for you to react to and so forth. So there's all these different issues. That it's, not, it's not a cut and dry where you can just look at the stats, as I guess what I'm saying. You really have to check this out. And I mean, I've gone through a lot of watches in my 40 years of wearing relatively high-end watches, mainly Rolexes, uh, until the last year, a little over a year when I've gone to GS. It was mainly Rolexes before. And a lot of the times it was uh, GMTs, and of course my day date, my 18238 day date that I wore for the last 19 years, um, and then other day dates before that. A day date is just super comfortable on wrist, just very, very comfortable on wrist. They really got it right with that watch, and that's why for many, many years it was pretty much the same, minor, minor changes. So you really have to check out the watch and see what... Um, the particular watch is like. Uh, hey Craig, do you believe that the Trinity time places like Patek, Vacheron, and Audemars are less popular because of cost of Swiss timepieces versus the cost of alternatives like Grand Seiko or Gilbert? I don't know that they're less popular. I think well, Patek is still selling well and all. Um, I, I mean, they've always been a, a niche niche watches for for relatively wealthy people that want dress and a very elegant dress watch to take to that black tie event. They really are designed for the wealthy to buy. They're not for average Joe to buy, and if average Joe's buying them, I think he's making a financial mistake. Just going to say that. Now, if you can buy a watch for list price and, and there's a lot of fervor going on and you can sell it like the gentleman that has the GMT Pepsi and you can sell it for a big profit, hey, that's speculating. That's buying and selling. And I did that, I did that back in the day. I've done it before. And, and if you can get out of the watch and make a nice profit, but you're taking a risk. You know, you, you might buy that thing and the bottom might fall out of the market. You might be stuck with a watch you can't really afford. So... But yeah, if you can buy and sell one, that's a different story. But I, I, I think that's for I think wealthy people should buy watches like that. Uh, let's see. I use an Everest rubber strap on my ceramic sub. It's perfect, and with the black rubber, the lugs don't look oversized, <laughs> Rich. <laughs> yeah, I'd get rid of the super case subs. <laughs> I'm I'm not a fan of the super case. Period. I think I heard rumors they might fix it next year. They might might uh, pull back from that error in design. I, that was a total, total fail on Rolex's part. All right, on that note, we're going to wrap this puppy up. I thank you all for tuning in. As usual, hey, make sure you click the subscribe and click the little uh, bell, that little bell, so you'll get notifications. Thanks, everybody.